Welcome back, gang. It's Deltia from DeltiasGaming.com. And yes, Oaken Soul has changed. It has gotten a nerf, and one of the popular sets has also gotten a nerf. This footage you are seeing right here is a side-by-side -side comparison of the live server and the current PTS version. I'm going to walk you through what changed, explain if it's significant or not, if you should hit the panic button on your Oaken Soul build, Spoiler alert, the answer is no. And I want you to walk away with this video having a clear understanding of how Oaken Soul works, how it will be impacted, if at all, and what are some options for you to use to change your build. And if you get anything out of this video, make sure to smash that thumbs up, leave me a comment, check the links in the description below for one bar builds that we currently have on the website, deltiasgaming.com. Check the website. But before we get to our video, you know what I love about MMOs? Their constant feeling of progression. Understanding combat and creating builds ripping apart monsters wave after wave with your friends. If you've watched my channel for any length of time, you know I love experimenting with multiple builds, characters, combat styles, and that's what keeps things fresh and me coming back to gaming. And that's why I wanted to share with you a game called Hero Wars available in the App Store or Google Play. This game's advantage is the sheer variety in heroes, classes, and abilities, similar to what keeps me coming back to MMOs. You have over 60 unique heroes to choose from and you collect them all. Build your own party and ultimately destroy countless dungeons and bosses. Now just imagine how much more fun that boring conference call you're supposed to be paying attention to would be if you could pick up your phone, select a hero, start progressing, and battle endless waves of monsters. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, here's a question for you. Where can you get 30,000 coins, 600 emeralds, and 5 awesome heroes to start dominating the hero wars right away? Too slow. The answer is in the link in the description below. Play hero wars now. And now, back to our video. So here is the overall general Oaken Soul build. If you don't know it already, two popular five sets along with the Oaken Soul mythic that locks you into one bar. The most popular five piece here is Sergeant's Mail. This comes from a base game dungeon. And what it does is as you heavy attack, it builds up stacks that makes your heavy attack do a lot more damage. And those stacks fall off if you don't consistently heavy attack every five seconds. I'm going to explain to you why this is relevant for what's changing pretty soon. But this is your bread and butter main source of damage. And if you play Oak and Soul properly, you can maintain this 100% of the time. Now, Oak and Soul itself, what makes it so powerful is the Empower buff, increasing your heavy attack damage on the live server by 80%. On the PTS, it's now 70%. So that got a 10% damage nerf. It is somewhat significant, but it's not an absolute overall game changer. Oaken Soul incentivizes you to rip off fully charged heavy attacks rather than using a global cooldown, constantly rotating through buffs like a standard two bar build. So when you think Oaken Soul, what makes it actually work well is applying one, two dots, maybe three, setting its target off balance and just sitting there ripping off heavy attacks because with the lightning staff, with that empower buff and these gear sets, it hits so hard. That's the general premise of Oak and Soul. And then gear set number two is Storm Masters, also a base game dungeon set. Now, this did get nerfed and it actually did get pretty significantly nerfed. So I'm gonna read the five piece as it stands on the PTS now. When you deal critical damage with a fully charged heavy attack, your light and heavy attacks deal an additional 1542 damage on monsters for eight seconds. And that's a broad category, basically all the PBE mods is the way I understand that working. Essentially, you can't use it against players. People were cheesing this in PvP. Now, the end is what really changed and actually kind of hampers the set a little bit. This effect can occur once every five seconds. So we have two sets to deal with, and this is going to really understand why this build works and effective and if it's still effective or not. So Storm Master, if we go to this little parse them here, I'm going to take off my five piece sergeant so you can clearly see it. When I do a fully charged heavy attack, you're going to see something pop up in the bottom of the screen. Now, that's the sergeant's buff. You notice like I, the very first attack I did, I actually kind of stopped the animation. It didn't actually register a fully charged heavy attack and didn't give me the buff. So hold on, this will make a lot more sense here pretty quick. So currently on the live server, you get that Storm Master's buff for 20 seconds. Much, 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 much longer. And it's a lot actually harder to maintain and like keep up than I originally thought. So again, I'm gonna rip off a fully charged heavy attack and then pretty soon it's gonna give me that sergeant's buff. And I have to actually hold down the heavy attack the entirety of the time to get it. 
Now it's about to spall off. So I'm going to start ripping off a fully charged heavy attack again. Okay, nothing. There. So you actually lose a lot of uptime on Storm Masters. I didn't think you would lose any, but you actually do. In fact, in combat, when I was doing the very final boss of Vatashram Hollows, I was about at 54% uptime with Storm Master with this chain. So it significantly hampers the actual five piece gear set. I still think it's the best option. Let me explain why. Now we're gonna put Sergeants back on um, and then explain kind of how this works and how you can use it to your advantage. So I took Storm Master off. Now by fully charged heavy attack, one proc, two. You notice the difference here? You actually get a Sergeant's proc straight away. And you can let off the gas, uh, so to speak, with the Lightning Zap and still get the proc. If you complete the fully charged heavy attack, similar to Storm Master, you actually get two procs, not one. So this, while the duration is only five seconds, Sergeant's is the key to actually doing massive damage because it's actually much easier to maintain and build up those five stacks. So you can kind of light attack, medium weave in between or rip off fully charged heavy attacks, which is what you're supposed to do with Oaken Soul. So we take a look at this character. Now that begs the question, is Oaken Soul completely gutted? I'm gonna show you some gameplay footage of a boss comparison again, kind of like the intro, so you can see for yourself. But the too long didn't read is, no. Doing actual content in Vatish Ram Hollows on the live server as it currently is, exact same champion points, exact same gear, exact same character, you saw it. I got 22 minutes and 21 second trifecta. On the PTS, with a 10% damage uh, nerf to Oak and Soul, and the change to Storm Master, I got 2309. Not good at math, but that's not a huge difference. In fact, it wasn't really noticeable to me actually at all playing it through the content. It felt just like the normal Oak and Soul build. But people are going to tell you that Storm Masters is complete garbage and it's worthless and expect the parse to go down pretty significantly. Uh, my friend Cody was parsing with it and only could maintain about 80% uptime rather than 90 or in the high uh, 100s. But it's still a fantastic set. Just expect the parse numbers to go down. You might be hitting 90 or a little bit lower, but actually in content, you really feel just as powerful. So just in case you want some alternative to Storm Master and kind of understand why it's so powerful just beyond the fully charged heavy attacking, let me explain. Some people are going to tell you about a set called Noble Duelist. So let's look it up here. Noble Duelist is light armor. It gives you stamina recovery for a two piece, which is quite odd. And the five piece. When you deal a uh, light or heavy attack damage in melee range, you increase your damage of your light and heavy attacks by 1987 for 15 seconds, and it can occur every 12 seconds. So that's actually pretty strong, but you do not want to use light armor inside of actual group content, specifically trials, okay? And here's why. If I go to this parse dummy and this current setup, let me get my little dang pets up. So it'll make sense in just a second. And I hit this and we're going to let it go through its little rotation and we'll get out of combat. I'm going to show you something that's very important and why medium armor is so important with this. I just went in 21 million damage parse dummy, which is going to basically simulate trials or the optimal DPS set. Now I'm using 5-1-1, so that's five medium, one light, one heavy. And fully optimized, you can get these numbers absolutely precise. What I mean by these numbers is you see this critical damage here, 123%. There's a cap of 125%. Right at that cap is optimal DPS. So ironically, if you just change out one armor piece, you can hit that. You also have a spell penetration cap of 18,200. You see that that one light armor kind of pushed it over into 18,000. So a fully mid-max build, specifically in group content, is going to want to try to hit 125 and 18,200. This is how you do the optimal amount of damage. Now, why is that relevant to medium armor? I don't think a lot of people understand how the armor works and why Oak and Soul works. It's predominantly because of medium armor passives. Okay, this one here, increasing your weapon and spell damage by 2%. Agility, sounds good, right? But you come here to this one, dexterity, critical damage and critical healing done for every piece of medium armor. So you put one more medium armor piece, there's 2%, there's 125% pretty much mid-max. The 511 setup that I'm running just gives you a little bit more max stats. So this puts you right at the edge, running the optimal amount of medium armor. 
Now, what about light armor? Since people are going to tell you to use light armor with Oaken so Light armor gives you penetration. Well, in an optimal first dummy, optimal trials group, someone is going to be providing all that penetration for you. When you're playing in uh, by yourself solo in veteran content, 18,200 is the cap. You're going to need to use skills that basically give you a source of major breach and if not minor breach. But what I'm trying to tell you is the more light armor you have, actually the worse damage you will do in a fully optimized group. This is why most players now play with medium armor because they don't want to have dead stats. Beyond 18,200 penetration, it's completely dead stat. So how you actually get more penetration using a medium armor to hit right perfect in solo content is simply change your Munda Stone to the Lover. Simply change your trait on your front from Precise to Sharpen. And then you have almost a fully mid-max gassed up solo build that works really, really well in trials just by simply changing your trait back or having two staffs or simply changing your Munda Stone from the lover to the thief. This is why Oaken Soul actually works. Trust me on this. We've done a gazillion tests on this. Medium armor is the play. And I want to explain this to you so you can actually pick the best sets that are mathematically and logically applicable for doing the most damage. So let's go back to that set now that you kind of understand the pros and the cons of it. So Noble Duelist, again, great amount of damage. It comes in light armor. So light armor, this would be really good for solo play in solo arenas. The major downside of this set is, well, I talked about light armor and that's kind of a group context. Number two is you have to play in melee range. The big advantage of playing with the Oaken Soul build is you can be far back. With Oaken Soul, you actually want to peel way back as far as you can and only come into range really to put your blockade down and set off balance. Otherwise, there's really no reason to be up close and tight, especially in solo. Trials might be a little bit different because you have to get splashed with heals and, and buffs and debuffs and all sorts of things that other people are providing you. But for the general player, that range is what separates the Oaken Soul heavy attack build from a lot of other ones because playing in melee range is very, very difficult as a DPS. There's constant mechanics, especially in dungeons. So while I'm not totally poo-pooing this set and saying it's the worst option ever, just keep in mind, it's not medium armor. The two piece isn't that good. Storm Masters has been nerfed. It is a viable option, but you're really going to have to play in melee range, be a little bit more aggressive, and kind of sacrifice some of the advantages of Oaken Soul. An additional option is a set called Undaunted Infiltrator. It comes from Arx Carinium. Now, this is medium armor, and when you use a ability that costs magic while in combat, you increase your damage of your light and heavy attacks by 15, 49 for 10 seconds, and you can just keep proccing this. So you can reliably get pretty close to 100% uptime as, as long as you're casting spells here and there. Every 10 seconds is pretty generous. So it kind of does some things that we already like, right? It comes in medium armor. We can have higher uptime. The number on the tooltip's great. We can stay at back and at range and all sorts of things, right? But what's the downside of this set? Well, if you look at it, look at the two and the three piece. Max stamina increased. That doesn't really do anything for us, unlike Storm Master, which gives us some crit. So while this is a decent secondary option, if you don't like Storm Master, what I'm trying to tell you so far is don't outthink the room and jump ship to a new set just because something got nerfed, because it's still really, really functional if you know the mechanics of how it works and why it's so powerful. So medium armor, we can stay at range. Yes, the uptime's a lot lower, but it's better than nothing. Another gear set people are going to tell you to use as an alternative is Aetherian Archive, and that's Invaluable Mage. So this set, also light uh, armor. Now, it does have a really nice three-piece, which is gain Miner Slayer at all times, increasing your damage done to every little monster, trials, arenas, anything in dungeons. That's a huge three-piece. Very, very nice. Now, this five-piece, your heavy attacks deal an additional 848 damage to monsters. Enemies you damage with fully charged heavy attacks are afflicted with minor vulnerability for 10 seconds, increasing your damage taken by 5%. So if you parse these two things out, the increased heavy attack damage is nice. Now, that 800 is almost half of what we're getting from Storm Master, so not ideal. Um, but two, you get an extra bonus of uh, minor vulnerability. Now, minor vulnerability is usually provided in group context by some healer or some specific class that's doing this for you anyways. So that's kind of a wash in um, actual group content. Another downside of this set is it comes in light armor and you also have to do a trial to get a hold of it. Whereas Storm Master is base game, 
very, very easy dungeon. You can run it on normal over and over and over. So this is another viable option for you to run instead of Storm Master. And it will perform okay, but not having that medium armor, not fully mid-maxing for maybe a parse dummy could be a separate issue. So before I leave you with some footage, watching the gameplay side by side, so you don't take my word for it, you actually watch the proof of it because I do the testing on this to share this information with you so you can enjoy the game a little bit easier, get some clarity, not kind of overreact and freak out. Now, the thing I will say is the Empower buff itself didn't seem that impactful to me. What did seem actually pretty impactful was Storm Masters. I really didn't understand it was going to be kind of a significant nerf, and it was. But out of my testing, it still seems like a really good option, especially if you gold it out the gear. I've already ran it back to back in Battish Ram Hollows and parsed with it. It's still performing great, and you'll just blow through content with the build, specifically the Magic Sword. Now, the Arcanist has come out. I think it's a terrible one bar build. I will continue to work on it and see if I can make it work very well, but it really wants you to use global cooldowns rather than very long lasting dots or pets like the Sork, and it just doesn't perform up to the Sork right now. Maybe some things will change with it. I'll do my best to create something that actually can parse relatively high, maybe 80k if I get lucky, and can do Vatishram sub 28 minutes if I can get lucky. But right now, the Sorcerer and the Templar are absolutely shining. So tier list below where I explain this and also the build links below. But no, Oaken Soul is not completely nerfed. It's still fantastic. It's still going to carry your damage and your survivability and make the game a lot easier for you. You got something out of this video. Smash that thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Check me out on twitch.tv slash gaming where my mom claims I'm the best streamer alive. Now watch the gameplay. Here's the proof.